Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated economist here. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about the Cantillon effect, um, or Cantillon effect. His name is actually Cantillon. He was a French economist from, like, back in the 1700s. He wrote, like, the first essay on economic theory, and part of this essay was the increase and decrease of the money supply and how that affects the economy. And the way he described it as a hypothetical country or state, and there's an increase in the money supply, and he uses a silver mine as an example. And so the silver mine comes online, and the new money starts entering into the system. The first people who have access to that money get to spend that money in face value. They get the best benefit of it. As it starts to trickle into the economy, the prices of everything begins to move up as this money, you know, this new money starts adding to the, to the supply. And the people at the very end of the receiving end of things, they have it worse because they have to deal with the higher prices, but their wages don't go up. So this is the can, the Cantillon effect that a lot of people are referring to, or the Cantillon, as I like to say it. So when you think about this Cantillon effect and how it relates to today, what you really have to understand is that Cantillon which went much deeper into the theory of what this does to the economy, because a lot of people just look at that Printing of money in using like the Federal Reserve as kind of like that silver mine and that the people who have first access to that money is going to spend that into the economy at face value, causing the prices to go up as that money enters and then the people at the very end deal with it. But really what's happening is, is that if you listen to Cantillon, as that money enters into the system and it starts driving the prices up, what it does is it starts driving out the inhabitants, the people who can't compete the people who can't survive or have that standard standard of living that they're looking for. So since these prices are moving up and they haven't received any kind of like benefit from the additional money, they bail out. But the other problem is, is that as these prices do move up, what it does is it creates a demand for foreign trade. So as these prices are moving up, the neighbor next door, the foreign you know importer, says, hey, I can sell you a product that's probably as cheap, if not cheaper, than what you are manufacturing in your own state. So pretty soon, foreign imports start coming in. At the same time, you have to think, well, where is that money going? It's heading out. So as this Cantillon effect begins to play out even more, and more money starts coming into the system, it starts importing even more foreign imports and driving out ever more cash leaving the people at the very end of the line without as much as they once ever had. Like, it becomes even worse for them. So this is really where the Cantillon effect really starts to play out, is that it's not just a matter of printing up new money and the people who have first access to it have the benefit of it, but what it does is it actually drives out manufacturing from within the state. So this is really where the big problem comes in. And I think about, like, the United States used to be the biggest manufacturer in the world, right? We produced more and distributed out to the world more than anybody ever did at one time. That totally reversed. Now we are the biggest importer. Well, it kind of makes sense because if you think about like being the manufacturer and you produce more than what you can consume and you start getting a surplus, well, that's kind of like having that silver mine, so to speak. You have this surplus of money. So what do you do with the surplus of money? You start increasing your standard of living. And you start buying more stuff. That demand starts increasing the prices. Once the prices move up, foreign competition starts to move in. You see what's happened here? So as the foreign competition comes in, then you start having more and more foreign imports coming in. And the people who are most advantageous to the situation are the people who have first access to the money. The people who are the importers themselves, like the, the vendors and distributors of these imported goods, and the foreigners. And the money just leaves the country, leaving less money circulating within the, the state itself for those who are at the very end to try and compete for. This is like really where the Cantillon effect starts to play out. And that a lot of people don't think, I don't think realize like where Cantillon was going when he came up with this idea of increase and decreasing of the money supply. So as this money increases and starts entering into the system, it's actually going to cause a deflationary scenario as you think about like less people within the state are going to be able to compete for that money. 
as foreign trade is now bringing in more of the business than what they can produce within the state itself. Does that kind of make sense? So I think about like some of these other nations, like maybe China, for example, who is also suffering with the situation of inflationary pressures, like with their property, which is like the major one right now. Now, a lot of people just want to blame that on like, say, easy money policies that are creating this, you know, bubble type of, of atmosphere. But really, it could be just this economic theory of Cantillon's theory where they are manufacturing more than what they are consuming. And this excess money coming in from, say, the United States is then making it more difficult on the very end of the of the people who or the far end of people who are not being able to receive this money as quickly within their system. When the prices start to move up, they can no longer compete and they start falling off of the off of the scale of, you know, economic activity. Does all that kind of kind of make sense? It takes time to, to work through all this stuff. So you think about it like it's not a one single administration that like, you know, presidential administration that causes this economic event to take place. This is something that goes on over many generations and decades. So as I was saying, like, you know, the United States used to be a major manufacturer. Well, now they're a major importer. And what do they import? Foreign goods. And what do we trade it for? paper dollars. Now, why in the world would anybody even want the United States dollar? Other than being the world reserve currency, there is no use for it. So this is where it gets really scary situation is that we don't manufacture here in the United States. We are dependent on foreign imports. And if there ever came a time when the, info when the foreign importers say, why are we trading our stuff for these dollars? This doesn't make any sense then we are going to be in one hell of a situation since we don't manufacture anything here. We are dependent. Okay? So now we think about the digital currencies that are coming in, the central bank digital currencies or even cryptocurrencies in, in general. This could create a very big disruption here in the United States as if they decide or if the world decides that the U.S. dollar is no longer needed, we have nothing to go back on to. We have no manufacturing here. So if for some reason, say, gold comes up as the world reserve currency, then the United States will no longer have that benefit of trying to convince the world to send us their stuff so that they can get the dollar. Instead, they will be sending their stuff to whoever has gold. And this is where I feel that a lot of people are probably not quite understanding of how drastic the situation really is, but there is no reversing course here. Like you cannot fix the system. Like you could go ahead and start to try and manufacture all that you want, but you're going to be in competition with foreign imports. And unless you're willing to take a loss for a while, it's going to be very difficult to come up with a product that is going to be cheaper than what somebody else can provide out there outside of our borders. You see where I'm getting at? We are now sitting in a situation in which that we are dependent on these foreign imports. And now it makes me think, it's like, okay, so if the people who this system is most advantageous for are the people who have first access to the money, so like the Federal Reserve and their cronies, the people who are importers and the foreigners themselves who are importing into the United States, if they're the ones who have you know, the benefit of the system, everybody else is going to suffer. And that makes me wonder why it is that they are pushing for this UBI as much as they are, this universal basic income. Because they know that if there ever came a situation in which that the world decided that they don't want the U.S. dollar, we are screwed. So instead, they are going to give people money so that they can continue to buy those foreign products. Because we're not manufacturing them ourselves. And since we don't really do anything to earn a living, now what? See, these are some of the things that I think about when I, when I read the Cantillon essay. That's what I thought about, is that the United States once was a manufacturer. Now they are an importer. And because of that, and having the world reserve currency, we are now stuck in a situation that we have to continuously import foreign goods. And if we do not have a manufacturing base that can do it, 
that can produce the money. Like, you know, if you, you got to have a job in order to make money, right? But if you don't have a job, what do you do? Well, we got the world reserve currency and I guess the manufacturer of money, like the mine, so to speak, like that silver mine, but we don't have a silver mine. We got the Fed. Well, the Fed can print up money, right? Be that miner and just give it to the people. Here you go. Helicopter money. Go spend it. Since we're not buying our stuff anyway, we're buying manufactured goods from overseas. It doesn't matter if you just print it up and give it away. See, it's the demand for the dollar outside of the United States that's giving us that ability to do that. So what happens when you don't? So that's the big question. How much longer will the world continue to want to use the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency? You got China. Look at look at the article. Excuse me, guys. Look at the article that I leave down in the description for you guys. It's an article talking about the Chinese central bank digital currency, and it's funny because even in that article they say, "How are they going to get the people to use it? Like, how do you convince the people to just go ahead and start using this central bank digital currency?" Well, what they have here, over there in China is two forms of payment, two common forms. Both of them digital. You use your phone. They hardly ever use cash. What they did is applied the central bank digital currency to that app. Now you can either use the money, the regular money like you normally would, would, or you can use the central bank digital currency. And now what you would have to do is like actually load up the central bank digital currency. And so the question again says, why would anybody do that? What would give you any, ben any benefit to using the central bank digital currency? Probably none. But if they just give it to you, then you'll use it. And so what they'll do is they take these most common form of digital transferring of money. And like here in the United States, it could apply to, say, PayPal or Venmo or Cash App or one of these other common you know, forms of digital transfer of money. And just put the central bank digital currency right into that tab. So you can be like, hey, you can just use the central bank digital currency. Use the Fed coin, so to speak. And all you have to do is just go to what you normally use anyway and just hit that one button off to the side. There's going to be no issue with trying to get people to use this money. None. So to think that there's going to be like a convincing it's not going to happen. It's going to be so easy to convince the people that they they will beg for it. In fact, it'll probably come during a time of crisis or in my my best guess it's going to be the next recession that you are going to find that the Federal Reserve had all kinds of tools ready for this next recession. And part of that is going to be digital wallets, a uh recession bond or catastrophe bond. I don't know exactly what they're going to call it, but it's basically going to be a bond issued by the treasury that the federal reserve can, because they can't legally, the federal reserve can't legally go right to the fed and buy bonds. So, or I'm sorry, the fed can't go right to the treasury and buy bonds. They have to buy bonds off the primary dealers, which is like the secondary market. But if they come up with like this special bond, like this a catastrophe bond, an emergency bond, some sort of like, I don't know, it, it would be like, you know, something that they have already like signed in by Congress that a particular like GDP falls to a particular level or unemployment rises to a particular level. And that the Congress issued out this emergency bond, but they already signed for it a long time ago so that if this event already occurred, they wouldn't have to go and vote for it. It had already been voted for so that this could take place. So that's kind of the thing that I see happening and that they will have it set up so that as soon as the recession hits, we won't even have any choice in the matter. It'll be all these things that are to start taking place. And everybody will all of a sudden realize here's an app that you can download that has all kinds of free money on it. All you have to do is just go and open it up. And people will start using it. And next thing you know, we'll have Fed coin in play. We'll be using central bank digital currencies. And most people probably won't even notice that there was a difference. All right. Uneducated economist. You guys let me know.